Good morning, Metal Ed's Internet. Welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And today we're looking at a brand new studio album from me and that man starring Nurgle of Behemoth fame entitled New Man, New Songs, Same Shit, Volume 1. Making this the second time this week I have reviewed a folk-inspired record made by a controversial and divisive yet prominent member of the modern black metal scene. If this keeps up, I'm just going to call this the folk and black metal meltdown because it feels like that's all we're talking about lately. For those of you unaware, Me and That Man is the dark folk, rockabilly, and outlaw country-inspired side project of Nurgle from Behemoth. A band that I really shouldn't have to explain or introduce at this point. I mean, if you've been paying any attention to the world of metal in the last decade, then you'll already know about Nurgle, about who he is, about what he went through spiritually, mentally, physically, before the release of The Satanist, and you'll already know that The Satanist was one of the most critically acclaimed albums of the last decade, at least in the world of metal. You'll already know about I Love You at Your Darkest, you'll already know about the big tours they've done with Slipknot, with Slayer, yada, yada, yada. Of course, all of this success has made them kind of divisive. The black metal fan base infamously does not respond well to mainstream success or change of any kind. But ultimately, and let's be honest, unsurprisingly, the complaints of hyper-conservative sword-wielding cave trolls dressed as Alice Cooper has done little to quell Behemoth's success and evolution. And that success and evolution has given Nurgle the confidence and freedom to launch Me and That Man, a project that sees him stepping away from metal almost entirely in favor of a sound influenced by the aforementioned dark folk, rockabilly, and outlaw country genres. But unfortunately, as we all know, confidence and freedom do not immediately equate to quality, as me and that man have, for me at least, struggled to make anything that I found consistently really enjoyable. There were moments of their previous record, Songs of Love and Death, that I enjoyed. Take, for instance, the raw and intimate feel across the record. I liked how bare Nurgle was on this thing, and I liked the western gothic rock atmosphere that he had constructed. But ultimately, it lacked urgency, it lacked staying power, and the songwriting, all things considered, was just kind of repetitive and weak. And unfortunately, this album isn't really much better. In fact, I'd argue it's probably a step down, as now Nurgle has invited all of these outside performers and special guests to contribute to the record that have robbed this of Nurgle's character, of his unique stamp. It doesn't really feel like I'm listening to Nurgle's take on dark folk, rockabilly, and outlaw country. It just feels like a giant jam session featuring some of Metal's biggest and most interesting names. Which isn't objectively bad, I'll even concede that it's nice to hear some of these artists stretch their wings and go into some weird alien western territory, but it ultimately makes for an album that lacks any cohesion, any unity, while still suffering from the same problems that plagued Songs of Love and Death. To the point where the only thing connecting any of these tracks is the presence of Nurgle himself, whose role is pretty diminished here. He only sings leads on one track, the rest of the time just kind of humming in the background and strumming away at his guitar. There are individual tracks that come out strong, but this often has to do with what the special guest is bringing to the table. Take for instance the track Deep Down South featuring Johanna and Nick of the band Lucifer, bringing in this kind of bluegrass bump and rhythm and some delicious southern-inspired melodies. Or the track You Will Be Mine, featuring Matt Heafy of Trivium, which kind of channels this modern country energy that feels very much on par with some of the darker material from Orville Peck. Or the droll and emotive shape-shifting closing number of Confession, featuring Nicholas Kavarforth of the Swedish black metal band Shining inarguably giving the best performance on the album as he's channeling all of the dark and twisted energy that makes Shining such a powerful band and bringing in influences from the worlds of Panopticon and even the artistic tendencies of Behemoth's last album, I Loved You at Your Darkest. It's so effective that honestly it makes me wonder if maybe Shining should go this route in the future because they've clearly got a better handle on this concept than Nurgle does at this current moment. Although I will give Nurgle some credit, he does come close to achieving the actual vision of me on that man 
on a few tracks, the best of which being Burning Churches featuring Matt McNerthy of Beast Milk and Grave Pleasures. An intentionally provocative number that wisely pulls from black metal's own history to create something so chilly, so unnerving, so real and authentic. With lyrics like, my life was reborn into that incendiary darkness, it brought to mind the great writers of satanic verses from that truth my eyes glowed with unholy illumination from the matchstick spark until the final glowing embers. I'm called by the light of burning churches. I'm saved by the light of burning churches. That's a genuinely powerful kind of statement, even hearkening back to the true hatred and evil that makes black metal really what it is that continues to make it such an appealing genre to so many people. Unfortunately, the rest of the album still doesn't even come an inch close to capturing that same power, nor do they come with the kinds of creativity that we've seen in some of the other tracks that we've mentioned. Take, for instance, cuts like Run With The Devil and Coming Home, which just kind of settle into these really simplistic classic rock and roll patterns. Or a track like By The River, which wastes a very soulful, beautiful performance from the legendary Ishan by pairing it with this one-dimensional metallic bluesy drawl that sounds like it could have been ripped from an old Zeal and Ardor demo. And Jesus, the less said about the empty calorie jam session of How Come featuring Corey Taylor, Rob Caggiano, and Brent Hines, the fucking better. I'm unfortunately going to give this album a 2 out of 5. I'd like to be more positive, especially considering there are a handful of songs that aren't just good. They're great. They're really inspired and they show these artists kind of stretching their musical wings, flexing their creative muscles. But unfortunately, they're forced to coexist and mesh with a bunch of other tracks that don't just feel pointless and bland, but they also waste a lot of incredible raw talent. Like, congrats, Nurgle, you were able to get the Grammy Award-winning Brent Hines and Corey Taylor, but did you do anything with that talent? Not really. And even Nurgle himself, in his quest to bring together as many guest stars, as many of his friends and peers as possible, is so diminished on this record, his presence is non-existent. He bleeds in with the rest of these special guests. His vision feels almost compromised by his necessity to have as many big names on this album as possible. Like, Songs of Love and Death may not have been a perfect album, but it definitely had a lot more personality and authenticity than this. It definitely felt like Nurgle actually making a solo album. Nurgle actually trying to do something really different. You're only really getting flashes of that here, and those flashes that you get are coming from people who aren't Nurgle, and that's kind of a problem. I would definitely recommend you check out the few tracks that I've praised here. I think that they are genuinely really great songs, but the rest of the album, eh, you won't miss much. And to be entirely honest, I'll probably forget about a good chunk of these songs as soon as the review for this goes online. At least one thing is certain coming out of this. I think even Behemoth's harshest critics will be looking at their next piece of work in a much more positive light following this. Two out of five, piss poor. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown and not an expert nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press sub... And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown. He fucking immediately. And you have yourself... A fantastic fucking day.